This Saudi native says it's no coincidence a majority of the 9-11 hijackers came from Saudi Arabia. If Islam has to prosper and becomes a superior religion, then certain steps has to be, to be taken by its followers, including spreading Islam by any cost, including the sword, and killing any opposition. These days, he lives in the West and goes by the pseudonym Al-Fadi. He also left Islam for Christianity, a move that would bring a death sentence in his native land. The crucifixion never took place. Someone else was made to look like Jesus and was put in his place. So y you learn all of these things and then of course you learned uh, uh, that the Quran commands you to hate Christians and Jews. Fadi wants to bring these bitter truths about Islam's holiest book to a Western audience. Along with other former Muslims, he's written a book called The Quran Dilemma. It analyzes teachings of the Quran from the perspective of one who actually lived under them. According to Fadi, life under Islam is much different than the whitewashed version often presented by the Western media and Muslim pressure groups. That includes the Quran's call to jihad, or holy war, against non-believers. It's basically a prescriptive commands that are found in the Quran when it comes to jihad, killing the infidels, spreading Islam until there is no other religion on earth except the religion of Allah. The West does not know many of these things, if not all of these things, because they're oblivious, basically, to what the Quran teaches as a whole. They're only fed portions of the Quran. Those peaceful portions came in the early stages of the career of Islam's prophet Muhammad. During that time, he lived in the Saudi city of Mecca with only a handful of followers. His message changed dramatically, however, once he moved to Medina, gaining converts and political power. Many of the Quranic verses from that later Medina period contain calls to violence and intolerance. Like chapter 8, verse 12, I will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. Therefore, strike off their heads and strike off every fingertip of them. Then there is the infamous verse of the sword, chapter 9, verse 5. Slay the idolaters wherever you find them, and take them captives and besiege them, and lie in wait for them in every ambush. Meanwhile, chapter 5, verse 51, warns Muslims not to take Jews and Christians as friends. Fadi witnessed this belief system firsthand growing up in Muhammad's birthplace of Saudi Arabia. He was a radical Wahhabi Muslim who knew members of the bin Laden family. As a young man, Fadi wished to follow in Osama bin Laden's footsteps and take on the Soviets in Afghanistan. I was willing to go and fight and die, but then that opportunity didn't uh, take place. That's when he decided to attend college in the West, in the very backyard of his sworn enemies. He planned to promote Islam to anyone who would listen. But a funny thing happened along the way. For the first time in his life, Fadi actually met and spent time with Christians. They're kind, they're patient, they're loving, they have moral values. Uh, they do not look at others with hatred. Uh, they don't have, uh, for instance, this uh, radical zeal that, uh, uh, for instance, um, a righteous Muslim will have. Uh, the more righteous you become in Islam, the more you hate others. In their case, actually, they were loving others. And at some point, I heard of the teaching of Christ that to love your enemies. Technically speaking, I am their enemy, that they did not hate me, they actually loved me. Before long, Fadi was ready to do what had once been unthinkable, accepting Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. But the decision was not an easy one. For you to leave Islam, you're leaving your identity, your culture, your community, your family. There is no separation between uh, state and mosque or state and religion. Fadi's family in Saudi Arabia eventually came to grips with his leaving Islam. One of his brothers, however, still threatens his life on a regular basis. Fadi says the threats won't stop him from telling the truth about his former religion. Muslims know very well that the best way to conquer is not by the sword anymore, it's by infiltrating the, uh, the societies, the political systems, and by basically taking their time to grow to become a majority that at one point they will have a voice that they can topple things basically to their advantage. With the Quran dilemma, Fadi hopes to ensure that never happens. Eric Stackelbeck, CBN News.